Well, praise the Lord, glory to God. We thank the Lord for this day, and we thank you that everyone that has got breath, let them praise the Lord. Yeah. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. I say God is worthy to be praised. Amen. I want to talk to you about uh, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, how to make a kingdom decision. And what does a kingdom decision look like? In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus spoke very clearly. And he used the word, I don't want you to worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow has enough trouble of its own <clears throat> in Matthew 6. And then in Matthew 6, 26, uh, he says, Are you not of more value than they? Meaning the birds of the air. He says, look at how my father takes care of the birds of the air. He takes care of them. I mean, these birds of the air, they don't ask. Uh, God for anything, they uh, are not uh, even filled with the Spirit, they have not confessed Jesus as their Lord, they just, you know, going from one season to another season, and they fly around, and it's, uh, uh, whether it's winter, summer, whether it's bad weather, tornadoes, whether it is uh, snow, these birds, they always show up, and somehow God takes care of them. He says, how much more will your Heavenly Father take care of you? And that is so important to understand that God values us far more than the creatures of this world. And then verse 27, Matthew six twenty-seven, he says, which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature. In other words, worries will remove from you your focus. Worries will remove from you uh, your stature in life. And I'm just looking here at another verse, uh, and that is so true, and I'm just looking here. Worries will uh, rob your day of joy. Worries will rob your day of joy. Uh, worries will reduce your ability to trust in God. Worries has the ability to choke the Word of God. The Word of God uh, is the breath of the Almighty. And worries will choke, literally like this, choke the Word of God, so that the Word of God, the breath of the Almighty, cannot breathe appropriately the promises of heaven to be birthed through you and in your life. <clears throat> Worries is a, a tactic of the enemy. You know, so often we may say, well, you know, I'm just concerned. I'm just concerned. Uh, and, uh, you know, I use that myself at various times. Then I have to check myself and say, okay, you are concerned. But to what extent am I concerned about what I'm thinking about? Is my concern busy filling me with an anxiety or anxiousness? or becoming anxious, or fearful, that is, that is exactly how worries work. There's a difference between worry and genuine concern, you see. Worry will immobilize an individual. Worries immobilizes you. But if you're only concerned, like stirred in your heart, God bless you, Jean, all the way from Great Town, KwaZulu Natal. God bless you. We love you. Worries will immobilize you. But when you are concerned, that means being stirred, that something needs to be done 
it will move you into action. Let's get to uh, Matthew 6, uh, verse 30. Now, if God so clothes uh, the grass of the field, which today is here, tomorrow it's thrown into the oven, uh, you know, will he not much more? There's that much more. Will he not much more clothe you? Then he says, oh, you have little faith. So if somebody is moving into the zone of worrying, you're actually moving into a atmosphere allowing your mind to become intimidated uh, with something uh, that will in incapacitate you, that will cause damage to your health, and that will disrupt your productivity. Worries will cause health issues. Worries will disrupt your productivity. Worries will cause uh, you to become negative and have a negative effect on your life. And that will actually affect you as well, the way that you treat yourself or others around you. Worries is a real stronghold of the devil's tactics. Now, having said that, he gives us the solution. This is what will conquer worry. Are you ready? He says in Matthew 6, 33, this is where a kingdom decision comes in. He says, but seek first the kingdom of God. The word seek first means put back God's divine order in your life. When you want to make a kingdom decision, put back God's divine order into your life. That's how we make a kingdom decision. Then he says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Let me just elaborate. When you put back God's divine order into your life, it is God first, then your spouse, then your children, then all other activities. When God is first in your life, you will move under a conviction and not preference. A lot of people after COVID, you know, they kind of have an attitude, unfortunately, well, we don't have to go to church. So they're actually speaking against the word of God because the word of God in Hebrews is very clear. It says, do not forsake the assembling of the saints. Jesus says, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus also, uh, you know, imparted how we he gave us the keys of the kingdom to build the church so that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So why would Jesus say, I'm going to build my church? Let's not be foolish. Uh, you know, you may have a midweek church where you go to with a pastor or a public church building uh, where you go uh, and you have a pastor as a shepherd over your life as a spiritual leader. Uh, that's divine order. Jesus was the shepherd over the 99 sheep and he went to look for the one who was missing. So, so if you're not shepherded, you're not under divine order. It is just like that. Now, Matthew 6 verse uh, 33, Jesus is saying, but seek first the kingdom of God. That means I'm not going to build my kingdom I'm going to build God's kingdom. But then I need to find out how to establish that kingdom realm in the atmosphere of my mind so that I can have a dominion mentality, that I can have a mentality to rule and reign and dominate anxiety, fear, intimidation. You have the power to dominate these forces of darkness that are 
enemies of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ when unbelief or doubt or double-mindedness or you know trying to uh, debate obedience those are enemies of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ now he says when you will seek my kingdom first I will cause you not to be like a pagan yes running around after all these things in uh, in the world because the kingdoms of this world satan offered to jesus in luke chapter 4 the kingdoms of this world he says the, the authority has been given me now he says if you were bowed down and worship me i will I, i'll give you all these kingdoms of this world but Jesus carried an unshakable, immovable kingdom, and he realized that Satan is trying to trip him up. He was not going to become, in, allow, I want to say involved, but allowing the kingdoms, all the systems of this world, to become a distraction in serving his father first in heaven heaven unless i see my father doing it i'm not going to participate unless my father tells me what to say or how to say it i will not allow my mouth to become a trap and a, a snare to my life i will only speak the things that will glorify god what would jesus say when he faces a challenge we always used to wear those little bands what would jesus do but how about what would Jesus say? Now, Matthew chapter 6, are you ready? Verse 33, <clears throat> he says, But seek first the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is the very government of God. The kingdom of God is the Basileia realm. Just a Greek word. Um, and and uh, it's, a, it's a realm in which your thought patterns move your your mind is most important the mind is uh, let me then put it this way the bible says have the mind of christ who is the king of his kingdom jesus christ the, now he says have the mind of christ so we need to have the mind of the king of his kingdom and then through the mind of the king of his kingdom, we begin to think like the king of kings. You are a king. He's the king of kings. All right. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That word righteousness, that word righteousness uh, is a, uh, in the Greek, uh, it's daika yasune. Let me just take a sip of my tea here, hot tea. Ah, wonderful. Uh, uh, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Righteousness in the Greek is daika yasune. That means seek the character of Christ Jesus by putting back into our lives God's divine order. That means first do what God expects of you. Then all these other things that you need will be added unto your life. It says there, uh, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things. Oh, well, I've just said it. And all these things shall be added unto you as well. Now we need to uh, make a kingdom decision. How do you make a kingdom decision in today's life? By using those ingredients. How? If that decision you're about to make is going to cause you not to be able to put God's divine order first in your life, it's not a kingdom decision. A kingdom decision is an unshakable, immovable decision. When you make a decision based upon kingdom concepts, you empowering yourself, that is right, to be established in the domain, the realm of God's kingdom, in the atmosphere of that realm, through the mind of Christ, and the Bible says, set your mind on heavenly things. That means it's like Jesus. Jesus' feet 
they, his feet, uh, they were walking in the earth realm whilst his mind was dwelling in the heavenly realm. Set your mind on heavenly things. That's why Jesus in the natural could walk on the storms of life on the water. In a natural, he could take the five loaves, two fish, multiply the stuff and hand it uh, out after uh, the Father has blessed it and it multiplied. The little bit that you have in your house, in your banking account, the little bit uh, or maybe much. However, uh, I don't want to demean anyone through uh, uh, unhealthy expressions. So uh, whatever you have in your house, you can multiply, increase. And for, as for you and your house, you will be established and not be a pagan, having to run around, chasing after the things in this life. When gas prices goes up, you will have a peace in your heart that God is my provider, is my Jehovah Jireh, my provider, is my El Shaddai, the God who's more than enough. That's right. And uh, my God shall meet all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Now watch before we close. All right, I've got about a minute and a half left. Now, he says, seek first the kingdom of God. You want to make a kingdom decision? Put God's divine order first. If that decision will remove your time from God, and relax you in your commitment towards God. It's not a kingdom decision. Number two, are you ready? He says, and seek first his righteousness. Anything that reduces, any decision that reduces your relationship, your commitment, your faithfulness towards God is not a righteous decision. And unfortunately, when you know uh, shall I say, fortunately, but maybe unfortunate for the flesh. Once you know these principles and uh, it's too late, you, uh, you know, you just need to practice them because once you know, you held accountable for truth. So he says, seek first the kingdom of God. My decision is to put God's divine order in my life first. Number two, I will develop a mind of Christ so that in my mind, I will set it on heavenly things. How will God benefit through my decision? How will my decision add value to my relationship with God, my relationship with my spouse, my relationship with my children? Yes, that is divine order. That's all in the book of Ephesians as well. So, now he says, seek first his righteousness. How does my decision put righteousness first? Righteousness is the daika yasuna in the Greek, the character of Christ. Anything that reduces the characteristics of Jesus Christ in my life, and I get overwhelmed, frustrated all the time, and I never have time to pray, never have time to read the Bible, never have time to go and fellowship with the saints at God's house. It says, be planted in the house of God, Psalms 92, it should be. And uh, so uh, when you want to make a kingdom decision, remember Romans chapter 14 says, for the kingdom of God is one of righteousness, peace, and joy. That decision of yours needs to promote right standing, righteousness between you and God. Peace, there should be no, nothing should reduce your peace that you have through Christ Jesus. And number three, joy. There should be an inward joy of excitement. I've made the right decision. And because of the results that I'm accomplishing, I will give my God glory and I will honor the Sabbath day. That is right. Even Jesus, uh, every Sabbath in our language, it's some days, okay, uh, for a lack of a better expression. 
every Sabbath he was in the synagogue teaching. Are you available every Sabbath day to put God first? Isaiah chapter 58 says, do not let your feet rush into sin by breaking the Sabbath. Well, this I trust this morning, this afternoon or evening, wherever you're watching from, may the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you. And if this program is benefiting you and adding value to you, I would uh, very humbly request that you sow a seed to help me. I've got programs uh, to put all this together and they charge me for these programs. And uh, of course, I've got to update and upgrade the computer things all the time. And there's just a lot of stuff. If you see all the things here, you'll understand uh, even just this. Let me see here if I can show you. Can you see this little uh, stream? This is a little uh, meter here, a stream deck. This is a few hundred dollars. And... Uh, you know, everything, everything, I get all this to produce this program so that you can benefit. And there's over 330 videos on YouTube. You can be in your bed and or your living room with a smart TV. Just punch in DR for Dr. DR Andres Van Skalkweg on your YouTube, into your YouTube and all my videos will pop up there, and you can watch it on your TV as well. Hallelujah. Thank you for sowing a seed uh, to AIM, Apostolic Inside Ministries, and the box number is there, 485 Mount Vernon, Illinois, and the zip is there. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord strengthen you. Go out in this day and begin to say, I will not allow worries to get the better of me. I will not become unhealthy through worries. I will not allow worries to disrupt my productivity. I will not allow worries to, to make me negative and have negative effects on me. I will not allow worries to rob me of my joy. I will not allow worries to reduce my ability to trust in God. Until next time, Jesus is Lord. God bless you. Love you. Ah. <laughs>